If we were giants, chapter 26. Tihab blew her horn once and motioned to those in the trees in front of theirs, closer to the river. True folk hidden among the branches of four separate trunks leaped into action, jumping out of the limbs and assembling their puppet in an instant. Suddenly, four forest giants appeared seemingly out of nowhere and stood in front of the advancing warriors. The people working the mouths screamed into their horns and pumped the levers that moved the jaws, and it looked like a quartet of monsters was bellowing and gashing their teeth in rage. The giant, the charge faltered as the soldiers took them in. These giants were enormous, at least twice a again as large as the original one, and Kira could tell by the wide eyes of the warriors that they were looking at more than they had bargained for. But, to the raiders' credit, their hesitation only lasted a moment before their battle cries increased in intensity, and they resumed charging at double speed. The two groups met in an explosion of violence. The giants smashed down with their great wooden fists, knocking soldiers this way and that, sweeping whole groups of them aside like dolls. The giants stomped, too, their heavy log legs rising high in the air before crashing down on the warriors' helmets, knocking many of them senseless. But there were too many soldiers. They swarmed the giants from all sides, and soon the huge puppets were waiting in a sea of them. Several takers jumped up as far as they could, grabbing the joints of the giant's knees and hung on fiercely, then climbed hand over hand toward the control center behind each giant's face. The people working the giant's arms had to spend their time and energy brushing these interlopers off their wooden bodies. It could no longer fight the ones on the ground. This gave the warriors with hatchets the opening they needed, Rushing right up to the giants, they began hacking away, the hefty blades digging in and sending showers of wood chips spraying into the air. Soon the four towering giants were in bad shape. Three of them were missing arms, where several invaders had climbed up the body, jumped onto the forearm, and hung there together, letting their combined weight rip the shoulder joint right out of the socket. The giants were all stumbling around, their legs hacking up and decimated, threatening to give out altogether and come crashing down. Tiha blew three short blasts of her horn, the signal for retreat. The giants turned and limp, ran desperately for the trees, not scared like scared and wounded animals. They teetered unsteadily on shoot up legs as they plunged through the underbrush. A roar of laughter erupted from the warriors below. This is going to be too easy. They regrouped into formation and marched resolutely in after their prey into the heart of the forest itself. Kira watched the takers move directly underneath her tree, line after line of them washing through like rolling waves. When the four battered giants had plunged deep into the wood, the tree folk inside abandoned their sections, leaped into the branches of surrounding trees, and disappeared into the leaves. The giants clattered lifelessly to the ground, their parts reduced to debris on the forest floor. The warriors stopped in their tracks, perplexed. There was no one left to charge. Standing in the middle of the trees, they looked down at the pieces of the giant, and then around at the still silent forest. Had they already won? That's when Tiha blew her horn again, one long, steady blast. Attack! Kira and her crew leaped into action, and she traded her stationary spot in the solid tree for a perch and a walking giant. All around, tree folk were doing the same. In a huge circle surrounding the soldiers, giants sprang to life everywhere. Ten, then twenty, thirty, and more. It was as if the entire forest were coming to life to protect this land. That's when the real battle began. Kira lost perspective on the overall picture. Her world narrowed down to what was happening directly in front of her. Tia's strong brothers were working the legs in unison, and her giant charged directly into the thick of the mass of warriors. Kira held on tight with both hands as she was nearly jolted out of her seat, not expecting how violently the giant would stagger and shudder as it crashed against all their solid, struggling bodies. She and Luan were working the same arm, and they swung it this way and that with all their might. 
The wood smashed against the enemy, snapping shields in half and sending bodies flying through the air. Look out! Luan yelled and pointed behind her. Kira turned her head. From a crack between the sapling logs that made up the arm, she could see a raider climbing toward her. He had a knife clenched between his teeth and murderous rage in his eyes. As she knew from watching earlier, if enough of his fellow soldiers got up here, the giant's arm would be ripped off and she and Luan would go tumbling into the roll, rolling sea of soldiers with nothing to protect them. They would be stomped into oblivion or pulled from the wreckage of the puppet to meet those cruel weapons. Kira grabbed one of a dozen sticks that she'd stashed near her perch for just this reason. The end of each stick had been sharpened to a point. She gripped it with both hands, waiting with bated breath until the warrior climbed right up to where she was seated. And then she jabbed the spike through the crack in the logs with all her might. The point cart caught the warrior in the face. He screamed and dropped to the forest floor. She turned and realized that Luan was doing the same thing. Raising her head to look through the viewing portal, Kira saw their giant was free of climbing marauders for a moment. She also got a broader look at the battle of the forest. It was impossible to tell which way it was going. True, the bodies of many soldiers were strewn about the forest floor, but the giants had taken their losses as well. Some had limbs missing while others had been hacked apart entirely, the jagged pieces of their construction lying in ruins. The tree folk operating those giants had made the ultimate sacrifice for their land and their people. An overwhelming sadness threatened to paralyze Kira, but she pushed that thought aside. They would honor their fallen brothers and sisters later. First, there was still a job to be done. Tiha, McKenna screeched from the other side of the puppet, where she and Kiri were working the other arm. Look, over there. A group of them is trying to break the circle. Kira knew this was bad. Their entire battle plan, after luring the takers into the forest and ambushing them with the entire army of giants, was to corral the soldiers, keep them contained, and fight them until they were all down or until they surrendered. If they let the circle be broken, the warriors could hide and regroup, and then the elements of surprise and control would be on their side. For the tree folk, unskilled in battle, this would spell doom. They had to finish this with the first wave of attacks, or else they'd be in serious disadvantage. Tia responded immediately. She thrust a brightly colored flag from the top of the giant's head, a signal to the surrounding giant puppets who followed her. Her brothers worked the legs with everything they had, and their giant raced toward the breach in the circle, where a mass of takers had ripped down two puppets that were working on a third, making a hole in the line of defense that they could pour through. Kira's giant got there just in time with the reinforcements. They rushed into the hole, covering it like a leaky hole in the bottom of a gourd. Three soldiers managed to slip through before the reinforcement got there. Tia directed her brother and the giant, chased them down. Luan and Kira worked the arms in a frenzy of activity. Together they thrust an enormous wooden hand down at the warriors, scooped them all up in a single handful, and then smashed them against the broad trunk of a nearby tree. The warriors fell numbly to the ground. Their giant worked with the others to repel the invaders trying to bust through. The soldiers finally gave up, turned, and ran to help in another part of the battle, but it was becoming increasingly difficult for the enemy to find a strategic place to join the fight. Although some of the giants remained or had been brought down altogether, most of the army stood still, still stood. Kira's heart soared at the sight. They were winning. They were going to do this. Oh no, the one barely croaked out to her, but Kira was able to hear him since they were so close together. Oh no. She turned to look at him and found an expression on his face of utter shock and dismay. What? She screamed at him. What is it? He merely pointed into the distance. Her gaze followed, and there, back toward the river, she saw the one thing that frightened a forest dweller more than anything else in this world. Smoke.